Shut it, man! So, I see we're at 100k. So thank you to all the Shove It crew who got down and did what they had to do. There's honestly too many of you to thank, so let's just give thanks to me and my Hawkbeak for making all of this possible. If you were expecting a celebration on the show today, and I was too, but I'm sorry because reaching Graceland also means something else. Something disgusting, vile, covered in grease, pus and piss. Because today is the long-awaited return of Ring of the Hawk Season 3. And it's time for Wes Pisco. And because I'm a masochist, for the first time ever, and this is technically a 100k special, I'm going to include the one night only matches too, and Explosion. This is a one time deal only, never doing this again, you've been warned. Now I've been told for this video we need to be on the lookout for the diving crossbody, which is apparently Pisco's finisher. But I promised that him hitting it was about as rare as your girl being in a mood where you don't need loot. And of course, if you know a wrestler who can do the J-O-B to the H-J-W-K any night, any day, ha ha, shove their name in the comments, Jack. <sighs> okay, it's Wes Pisco. What I did to deserve this, I don't know. Wes Briscoe debuted backstage in 2012 with Kurt Angle. He's not even introduced and he asked Kurt if he can give him a lift to Bound for Glory. AJ Styles storms into the locker room and sends Briscoe on his way. He grits his teeth and piss drops down his face as he's humiliated. He would go on to keep appearing backstage supporting Kurt Angle for the next few weeks. It feels like a major case of nepotism because all they keep doing is talking about who his family are. It's glaringly obvious now by the way but Wes Briscoe is one of the masked Aces and Eights members. You can tell by his greasy hair. No one called this at the time because nobody knew who he was at the time. Match 1, gut check match. Where's Pisco, who needs to impress the judges to get a TNA contract? And his opponent is Garrett Bischoff, two of the biggest scrubs in TNA history. This video is going to be painful when we're starting out like this. We've not even started the first match and I feel like I'm dying. Briscoe goes behind and takes Garrett down. Then Garrett does the exact same thing back to him. How exciting. Now Briscoe hits a fireman's carry takeover slam, but he misses his leg drop. Garrett takes him down again and we seem to have a scrub standoff. Kurt Angle appears smiling at ringside. This feels like a training match. They both throw drop kicks and they're even. Highlight of the match is a monkey flip from Briscoe. He follows that with something, uh, I don't know, a barging arm drag. Well, I don't know what it was meant to be, do I? They're now having a WrestleMania square off throwing punches in the match because they're both exhausted and we're three minutes in. Briscoe manages a swing and neck break and alpha one count before he's floored by Garrett. Briscoe retaliates with what I think was meant to be a corkscrew crossbody. Briscoe keeps spinning around so Garrett sweeps his legs out. It's like that one Kylie Minogue song from back in the day. Moments later, Wes tries a suplex which Bischoff reverses into a two count pin. And there it is, the grease jack, which is usually the setup for the grease cutter for Bischoff. He can't connect with the grease cutter and Pisco rolls him up with a pretty decent pin to be fair. And that's the three. Garrett is the only man to lose against a gut check contestant. No surprises there. Angle hugs them both after the match and tells them how good they both did. Okay, it was actually slightly better than expected, but it, trust me, it gets worse. Much worse. It was pretty basic, but I guess it was fine. The crowd cared, so I'll be fair and give his debut a C. Kurt Angle says he's been training Wes since high school and Wes is like his son. It's a shame that Wes didn't carry the boldness gene. Actually, stay tuned. Match 2, Final Resolution 2012. Wow, this scrubs on pay-per-view in only a second match. 8-man tag. The Aces and Eights, which is Devon Dudley, Doc, and two Mask Boys. So many worthless jobbers on this show, by the way. And they take on Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, who deserves better, and Pisco and Garrett. What a horrible match. I don't want to watch this. How is this a pay-per-view match? As soon as the bell rings, the Aces and Eights run away and hide for two minutes. Great match we have here. The match is eventually started by Devon Dudley and Kurt Angle. It moves along at a snail's pace for a while. Pisco is actually the last member of his team to do anything. He's tagged in by Garrett Bischoff and they send a masked boy into the corner. Wes Briscoe now hits poetry in motion off Garrett. His follow-up attack is missed, but he recovers and hits the alternative version of a grease jack. Come on, Wes, don't steal Bischoff's moves. He only has about two. He tags out. I wish I could tag out. Believe it or not, out of the four competitors on their team, Samoa Joe is the one that gets isolated. You had Briscoe and Garrett, but you chose Samoa and Joe. He makes the wise decision to tag Angle in when he gets the chance. The match breaks down. Doc hits a choke slam on Angle. But when he turns around, Wes hits him with the crossbody. There it is. He actually hit it. I can't believe I've seen it. He can't capitalize because he's hit with a big boot. Everyone's hitting finishers. Angle has the ankle lock on now, but the Aces and Eights member is sneaking up on him with a hammer. 
Bischoff snatches it from him and looks confused. Angle snatches it from Bischoff and goes to hit Doc, but Wes charges him with a spear to take out Doc. Angle wins it with the Angle Slam. Now, what happened at the end here was actually a case of good timing from Wes, because he needed to time that spear perfectly so that it looked like he wasn't deliberately stopping Kurt from using the hammer, because Briscoe is of course in cahoots with these guys. We also get to see the piss in the wind, which is actually pretty rare, trust me, so it's a D. He didn't do too much. Before the next match, Angle is kind enough to share some of his perks with Briscoe and Garrett. Briscoe looks like a mole rat. Match 3 tag match, the Robbies. Ugh. Robbie E and Robbie Welsh Royder T. And they face the world's greasiest tag team, Wes Briscoe and Garrett Bischoff with Kurt Angle. Briscoe is picked up straight away and power slammed by the Welsh Royder. I'm not even making that up, it was literally straight away. Terry shunts him into the corner and now Robbie is in being wacky. Briscoe starts trying to do a fight back but he's given a drop toe hold. Terry's back in now and he puts Briscoe in a bear hug. Briscoe boxes his ears but he still can't make the tag. Briscoe is well and truly isolated. Robbie is unable to connect with a flying something and he misses his following elbow. Bischoff's desperate to get the tag and he does. So 5 minutes of nothing for Pisco then. Later on Pisco makes the blind tag and with Robbie T dazed, Briscoe hits the piss in the wind. And believe it or not, that's the three. Well seeing as Briscoe hit a grand total of one move, it's an S. Oh, no. Kurt is hit with a hammer after the match and Wes and Garrett are very concerned for him. A few weeks later, during a cage match between Kurt Angle and Aces and Eights member Ken Anderson, Wes and Kurt have a masked member of the Aces and Eights cornered in the cage, and it's Garrett Bischoff. And then when Kurt attacks him, Wes Briscoe reveals that he's also an Aces and Eights member. The following week, 7th of February 2013, Hawk Hogan was born. So at least something good came from Pisco. Garrett and Wes were trying to cut a promo to explain why they joined the Aces and Eights, and Wes managed to botch Hogan's name, calling him Hawk Hogan. Garrett Bischoff! So that's where it came from in case you wondered. And just look at the state of this guy, he looks like he's on the verge of tears, he's dripping in piss, possibly from an initiation from the Aces and Eights. Okay, moving over to our first one night only show, never seen any of these matches before so maybe there's some hidden Wes Briscoe gems. Match 4, one night only, World Cup 2014. Rockstar Spud vs Wes Pisco. If you're a fan of Wes, you're in luck because he pulls double duty on this show, god help me. The crowd is in complete silence as he enters. Pisco shoves Spud away, surely he can do some moves to this guy. Now Pisco slaps him. Spud grits in his teeth, dumps in his nappy and fires back. The ref gets in the way and Briscoe lands a cheap shot. A shoulder in the corner. A sleeper hold. Two minutes into the match. I think I'm going to fall asleep. Spud gets out of it and starts running, but Briscoe flattens him. Now Spud turns it around for drop kick and attacks in the corner. He tries the 10 punches in the corner, but Briscoe sort of stun guns him. Briscoe with an interesting takeover now, which gets him a one count. Back to the sleeper hold we go. This is honestly one of the most boring matches I've ever seen. Do something! Oh wow, asking you shall receive. It's a, it's a swinging move into his knee. It actually looks alright. Hope you enjoyed that one because we probably won't see it ever again. Spud hits an integuri kick now and Pisco starts trying to comb his hair with anger. Spud drop kicks him out the ring and he hits a big flip dive to the outside and then he gets Wes back in the ring. Spud follows it with the piss in the wind. So much move stealing in this video, Jeff Hardy will be dumping in his nappy. And then out of nowhere, for some reason, Briscoe hits an power slam, and that's the three. One of the most boring matches I've ever seen. At least it had two new moves from Wes, so it's a D. Match 5, later that same night, 10 man elimination tag. Aces and eight. Doc, Nux, Wes, Anderson, and Ivalice Velez. Yes, yeah, she was an Aces and Eights member on these shows for some reason. And they take on dancing band member Kenny King, Bad Influence, Mickey James and James Storm. What a main event we have here. Can you imagine if you paid for this in 2013? I guess the Aces and Eights are a country according to this pay-per-view as it is a World Cup pay-per-view. As expected, Briscoe doesn't start this one. He gets tagged in eventually against Kaz. He's immediately given a hip toss. Kaz now works with Kenny King to hit a big double elbow. Kenny King slams him and connects with a springboard leg drop. Briscoe kicks out at two. The whole of Team USA hits running ass attacks to him in the corner, including Mickey. This gets a completely unwarranted TNA chant from the crowd. Bad Influence now snap off a double suplex on Pisco. 
He's getting the piss beat out of him, and that's a lot of piss to beat. Kai sends him into the corner and then sends him into Daniel's boot. Kenny King's in now, hitting shoulders in the corner for another two. The crowd chant tap as Kenny King squeezes on Pisco's neck, but Pisco's made of stronger stuff, mostly urine. He tries a fight back, but he's given a reverse back elbow. Now Kenny King gives him that handstand kick thing that he did. Briscoe has literally done nothing in this match. King tries to suplex him from the apron now, but Briscoe lands on top of him, and Ivelisse holds Kenny's leg down, and believe it or not, that's a free. Briscoe celebrates like it's a big deal. Daniels immediately comes in and hits him with a back suplex. Kaz now with a really bad looking scoop Sam, he looked heavy. He also hits a springboard leg drop just like Kenny King did, and just like Kenny King it's just a two. It's been ages, but Pisco finally manages to scramble over to tag Ivelisse Velez. After Mickey puts her away, Wes scrambles back in and he rolls up Mickey James for the three. No time to celebrate though because James Storm straight away hits a backstabber and that's the three. The James Storm backstabber, has that ever finished anyone off? This is a hard one to grade because he did eliminate two people, but on the other hand he did absolutely nothing. And I'm not trying to make him look bad, he was literally battered by everyone in this match without a response. A D is fair and if you don't agree I don't care. Match 6, Lockdown 2013. Okay, so this is like the main event of this video. It would never get bigger than this for the inexperienced Wes Briscoe. Briscoe looks like he's trying to push out a dump as he comes to the ring. He takes on Kurt Angle in a steel cage match. Angle takes him down with a double leg straight away. The crowd chant USA, because as established, Briscoe is from the country of the Aces and Eights. Angle with a German suplex now. Briscoe desperately tries to escape, but it's way too early and Angle back suplexes him. Kurt Angle makes a mistake now and crashes into the corner, and now we get some of the standard boring Wes Briscoe offense. A snap mirror into a kick, punches to the face, and a t-shirt choke. Oh look, it's the grease jack. That gets Briscoe a two count, so is he officially stole that move from Garrett now? Angle finally manages to counter him with a boot in the corner and he hits a missile drop kick. When they get up, Angle throws him overhead with a belly to belly. Finally, the cage comes into play now. Angle throws him into it, not once, not twice, but thrice, and it sure wasn't nice. Talking of doing things multiple times, Kurt Angle hits six German suplexes in a row. Angle decides he's done enough now and he flies from the top with a frog splash, which somehow Briscoe dodges. Wes Briscoe with a side roll now for a two count. He tries to clothesline Kurt down, which Angle blocks, and there's the Angle slam. Kurt can't capitalise for some reason and they're both down. When they get up, Briscoe hits a punch to the slash zone. Briscoe's now crawling out the open cage door, but Angle's up just in time and he puts him in the ankle lock. Wes immediately rolls through and sends Kurt into the cage. Wes Briscoe now starts climbing the cage and he's up to the top. Angle wakes up and gives chase. He brings Wes back to the top rope where he hits a German suplex from up there. This actually gets a good reaction from the crowd. Then there's a ref bump. Angle rolls through into a grapevine ankle lock. Briscoe taps out, but no ref. Kurt Angle hits another angle slam which knocks the referee down for some reason. Kurt now leaves through the cage door, but the ref hasn't realised. D'Lo Brown runs out and he throws Kurt into the cage. He also drags Wes Briscoe out of the cage. And the ref wakes up to see that Wes Briscoe has just beaten Kurt Angle. Wes Briscoe has beaten Kurt Angle in a cage, and lost for words. Well, this wasn't terrible. It will be the best match on this video, so it's a C. This run of matches so far is honestly not as bad as I hyped up. I don't know what I was so worried about. Match 7, One Night Only Tag Team Tournament 2013. Wes Briscoe and Garrett Bischoff. Why is it always these two jokers paired together? And they take on the Hot Shots, Chase Stevens and Cassidy O'Reilly in 2013. As established, Cassidy O'Reilly looks like a depressed version of Shane Douglas. The crowd actually remember the Hot Shots, which is pretty sweet. Briscoe will start this one with Chase Stevens, and he's drop kicked down and then chased with a float over in the corner leading to arm drags on Briscoe. Depressed Shane Douglas is in now with a stomp to the hand. Wes gets up and scoop slams him and then he runs to his brother Garrett Bischoff for help. Tanae and Taz are discussing nepotism on commentary, very appropriate timing. After a while, Briscoe rushes the ring and he's double back body drops. This match is fine when the hot shots are in control, but it's boring when the aces and eights are. Briscoe's back in now with a snap mirror into a kick. Cassidy Riley has been isolated for a while. Briscoe almost beheads him with a clothesline. I can't believe I have to watch these two team together so much already. And there's plenty more to come. I feel like someone hates me. Taz is drunk and he keeps calling Garrett Wes. A suplex now from Wes adding a new move for his arsenal. Finally, something happens as we get a double down. Cassidy and Wes both tag out. After the hot shots start dominating, Wes has to break up a pin, but he misses and hits his own partner. One of the hot shots hits him with a knee into a clothesline. Cassidy tries to follow him out to the floor of a dive, but he completely misses Wes. Chase Stevens then smacks Wes off the ring apron, which distracts the referee, and Garrett hits a punch to the slash zone for the free. Hated this match, it's an S. 
Match 8, later that night. Tag match. Wes Briscoe and Garrett Bischoff versus Samoan Joe and Magnus. I still don't know why this tag team had to exist for so long. Wes Briscoe is puffing his face up at the camera and rolling his eyes around like a complete idiot. Garrett will start this one. Later into the match, Wes tries to punch Joe in the gut, but he's too padded and Joe fires back. Magnus gets the tag and Briscoe pokes him in the eyelid. It doesn't have much effect and Magnus clotheslines him down and brings Joe in. They double team Wes ending with Joe hitting a back sent on. That's like a voxel courser falling on you. Aces and eights cheat to bring Garrett back in. Now the aces and eights manage to isolate Samoan Joe and work on his leg. This is sleep inducing. It quickens when Magnus gets the tag. He hits a high running knee which smashes Wes in the face. Samoa and Joe connect with Uranagi and then they put Bischoff away at the snap mirror into the Magnus diving Shut elbow. It. Simply horrible, it's an S. Match 9. One Night Only Hardcore Justice 2. Six man elimination tag. Aces and eights. Doc, Nux and Pisco versus Magnus who kisses a girl in the crowd which makes her spray in her knickers. And he teams with James Storm and for some completely random bizarre reason, Bob Holly, who makes his only ever TNA appearance on a One Night Only show. He has the worst ever ECW knockoff music I've ever heard. He has weapons because he's hardcore. Briscoe is scared of Hardcore Holly, so he asks Knox to start the match. The crowd are chanting, tag in Wes. They want to see Bob kill him. Knox flattens him and obliges the crowd. Wes tries an arm drag and it looks sloppy and clunky as Bob reverses it into one of his own. Holly follows that by kicking Wes in the nutsack. James storms in now. Storm kicks him in the back of the head from the ring apron. He unfortunately takes his after ball and wow, an overhead belly to belly from Wes. Pisco seems to do a new move almost every match and then he forgets how to do it. He's out of the match for a bit now. I love this moment here. Nux is hitting punches on Magnus whilst Wes jumps around on the ring apron with happiness. What a goofball. He gets the tag in again now and he hits a running knee in the corner. A one count from a snap mirror for Wes now. This match is so boring that I started peeling paint off my ass. Storm finally gets the tag and he hits what's supposed to be a bulldog on Wes. It looks bad. All anyone wants to see is Bob Holly. He grabs a stick and the crowd chant, please hit Wes. He smacks all the Aces and Apes members, including Wes, several times. He even breaks it over his head. Now Holly hits the Alabama slam on Nux. Damn, that is impressive. And then, wow, Wes Briscoe rolls up Bob Holly and he's gone. Literally seconds later, Magnus puts Pisco away at the Michinoku driver. I can't believe he pinned Holly. This match would have been better if Holly had actually been used in the match. Why did he bring a whole trash can of weapons if he was only going to use the stick? I can't believe I'm talking so much about Bob Holly. But you'd have much else to focus on when you're making a video about this worthless piece of bird turd. By the way, the match is won by James Storm with the last call. It's a D because I enjoyed his interaction with the crowd and Bob Holly. But in reality, this match was boring. Jesus, we're only on match 10. Impact six-man tag. Angle, Storm and Eric Young versus Garrett, Doc and Pisco. Talking of boring matches, here's another. Angle gets another chance to beat up the man who used to be like his son. He doesn't beat him enough for my liking. Do you know what's weird when you think about it? Why don't they mention his win over Angle in the cage a bit more? What was the point if they weren't going to talk about it? I'm sorry, I'm rambling. That's all I've got when I'm watching a match like this. After eight minutes, Pisco hits the first move of the match for himself. It's a simple suplex. The only good bit of this one is when Angle gets a hot tag and he suplexes all the aces and eights ending with an Angle slam on Pisco. Angle can't make the pin because D'Lo Brown is here again. Angle puts the ankle lock on Garrett and then Wes Briscoe sneaks up from behind and rolls Angle up for the three. I'm dying. I can't believe he has two wins over Kurt Angle. And this one was just down to Angle's own stupidity. These matches are so hard to grade because he does absolutely nothing and then he beats someone. I was going to give him a D, but the ridiculous facial expressions he's pulling after the match give it an instant S. Ow, no. What's he doing getting his mouth ready for when he gets back to the Aces and Eights clubhouse? Match 11. 10 man tag. Nux, Doc, Garrett, Devon and Pisco versus Kurt Angle, Samurjo, Magnus, Eric Young and Joseph Parks. Angle chooses to start the match with Wes by throwing him in the ring. Angle with a snap suplex for a two count. Pisco dumps in his nappy and pokes Angle in the eyelid and tags out. After that incredible flurry of offence, Briscoe proceeds to do absolutely nothing for five minutes. Parks hits him with what looks a bit like a Monty Brown pounce, but the thing I'm sure of is that Wes went flying. Parks scoop slams him into a waddling splash and Devon has to break up the pin. The match breaks down now and Pisco is sent out the ring by Magnus. Pisco's really struggling with Joseph Park who hits him and Garrett at the same time. Then Doc wins it with a low blow. It's getting worse, isn't it? It's so noticeable right now. If they're so badass, why do they win all their matches with scrappy Ow! wins? It's an S. Match 12, two on one handicap match. Kurt Angle versus Wes and Garrett. God, is this thing still going on? 
West starts with Angle. Perk beats him down in the corner. Kurt hits a suplex now. It's all too easy so far. Angle throws him into the corner and asks Garrett to come in. Garrett doesn't do much better, so Wes rushes the ring, but he gets a back body drop. Garrett then distracts the referee, and Briscoe is able to hit a punch to the slash zone, and now the match has turned. Turned for the worst. Garrett sends Angle into the Briscoe clothesline, and he holds his long arms up with happiness. Those things are really lanky, aren't they? Briscoe moves on to a sleeper hold, but moments later, Angle turns it into a backdrop suplex. Kurt Angle starts beating them both up at once with suplexes. He hits the German suplex on Wes twice. He tries for the third, but Wes stops him by grabbing onto Garrett, so Angle suplexes them both overhead at the same time. Angle slam on Garrett now, but Wes is able to break up the pin. D'Lo Brown appears at ringside, again. Angle puts the ankle lock on Wes again. D'Lo throws a chain to Bischoff, and he decks Angle, and now Garrett Bischoff has also beaten Kurt Angle. God, I know Kurt was on perks, but what was he thinking losing to these guys? And plus, he looks so stupid. Why does he keep turning those back on them? Now, Wes and Garrett hit a shield-inspired powerbomb. It's an S. There's nothing here from Wes. There's no need to guess. Match 13. Wes Briscoe. Oh, no, he's got a microphone. His voice goes so up and down when he speaks. I can't take him seriously. He's with Doc and Garrett. They beat up surfer Samuel Shaw, which leads to a match with Wes against Magnus. Magnus deals with him with ease and knees him in the head. Then there's a bit of a scary moment where Magnus tries to suplex him and Briscoe almost falls on his piss patch. He does go over for it eventually. During the break, Pisco somehow gets the advantage, not sure how. Briscoe manages to get a two on a mini final cut, which Todd Kennelly calls an innovative elbow. Magnus comes back with some clotheslines. He tries a third, which Pisco blocks. Pisco tries to dive, but he's caught and suplex slammed. Magnus wants to dive too, but he can't manage it either because the Aces and Eights swarm the ring and the match is thrown out for DQ. Terrible, boring, puke-inducing, change the channel and hit it with a brick, it's an S. Match 14, Slammiversary 2013. Six-man tag, Mr. Anderson, Wes Pisco and Garrett Bischoff versus Magnus, Joe and Jeffrey Nero Hardy. Pisco fights Hardy for the first time here, but it doesn't go well for him. Jeff tries to slam Pisco into the corner, but he uses his grease to just sort of slip away from it. Taz says that it was his wakeboarding background that helped Wes slip out of it. Just like all the other multi-man matches, it sucks. I'd like to say something positive about it though, but I can't. Oh, Jeff Hardy dances at Pisco, I guess that's kind of funny. I think I'm depressed. Hardy starts hitting the twist of fate to people and he hits the whisper in the wind on Pisco. Hey, remember when Pisco had a finisher? The match breaks down as usual. Jeff Hardy hits a twist of fate on Wes. It looks terrible, so he picks him up and does another one straight away. It's still bad. Jeff can't finish him with the swanton because Bischoff makes him fall in his nutsack. It looks like Wes Briscoe has it won with a punch to the nutsack into a roll-up, but Jeff flies from the top with the swan tom, and there it is, that is the three. The worst match of this run, and that's saying Slater something. Match 15, Battle Royal, Bound for Glory Series Qualifier. Devon versus Anderson versus Pisco versus Nux versus Garrett versus Doc. Basically, it's just a complete sham, and it's not really a proper match. It's got a predetermined finish. Imagine that in a wrestling match. They all pace around the ring like crabs. Anderson shoots Briscoe of his finger, he holds his chest and then flies over the top rope and he's gone. Anderson proceeds to eliminate all the aces and eights in joke fashion. The crowd chant, this is awesome, it is actually kind of funny to be fair. Doc doesn't want to go and he gets a pretty good reaction from the fans when he turns against Anderson. But at the end of the day, he's a jobber and Anderson throws him out in a couple of seconds. Not much to say, it's an S. Match 16 Explosion, Wes Pisco, who comes down the ramp for the first time in a while. He also has a wife beater on. Not sure if he normally wears these outside of wrestling. He takes on Eric Young with ODB. Eric Young and Briscoe trade arm drags whilst the crowd chant ODB. Pisco kicks him in the nutsack to gain the advantage. Eric Young isn't taking it seriously despite being kicked in the sack and he's grabbing the referee and trying to lock up with him. ODB grabs Pisco's leg. He can't move for about 20 seconds. When he eventually turns around, he's hit for a drop kick. I wish I had more to say, but I don't. Briscoe hits some leg drops, which I'm sure you'll all find fascinating. Eric Young wins it of a crucifix pin whilst Pisco tears his grease locks out. He looked extra messy in this match, it's an S. Oh, no. Match 17, explosion tag match. No one gets an entrance. Wes and Garrett versus uh, Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez, aka LAX 3.0. I never expected Supermex to struggle so much with these two jobbers. Chavo gets the tag and hits a double crossbody on the scrubs. I'll let him off, he wasn't in TNA when that was Pisco's finisher, he wasn't to know. Now Chavo hits a head scissors on Wes, at least I think it was. Garrett is beat and Wes has to break up the pin. Hernandez is back now and he hits a nice backbreaker on Wes. Then the match all goes wrong. 
Hernandez wants to do that running diving clothesline from the ramp. Air Mexico, I think they called it. It seems like Bischoff pulls Chavo into the dive, but it just looked like a botch. Don't know if the camera angle was bad. And there it is, Garrett Bischoff connects with the grease cutter for the first time in this video. And that's the three. I can't believe they beat Chavo, Guerrero and Hernandez without help. Actually, they didn't even cheat either. What a shock. If Briscoe is the grease and Garrett does the cutter, does that make him super effective against his own partner? Oh, no. Match 18, 10 man tag. Lose with the full leaves TNA. The aces and eights with Bully, Brooke and Tito Ortiz and they take on the main event Mafia. Sting, Magnus, Joe, Rampage, Jackson and AJ Styles who's with nobody. The main event Mafia seems to be in full control. Magnus does a suplex slam to Pisco. He desperately tries to cover up as he's forced into the Mafia corner. Joe starts going nuts with stomps and punches. He hits the turnaround kick in the other corner. He gets a two count. It annoys me that nobody's bothering to break up pins when careers are on the line here. Pisco manages to get Bischoff in. That same man brings him back into the match later on and they try to hit a double team move but they just don't have any cohesion. The crowd chant, Pisco sucks. He quickly leaves. His next involvement is when the match breaks down. I think he's crying in the corner. Now Rampage Jackson punches all over the aces and eights, he even scoop slams Pisco. There really isn't much going on from a Wes Briscoe perspective. AJ Styles wins the match with a Styles clash on Devon Dudley whilst the aces and eights barely make an effort to get back in the ring. It's an S. Don't you love the way Briscoe grits his teeth to show that he's angry but he just looks stupid? Then he looks like a silly little child that's wet and snappy. Match 19, tag team match. Gunner and Storm who are tag team champions, but this won't be for the belt. And they take on Wes and Garrett who jump them on the ramp. I can really only see this one going one way, but I've been surprised by the end result a few times in this video. The man who baths forgot fights Gunner around the ring, and it's not going well for him. Later in the match, Wes Briscoe breaks up a suplex attempt so the Dream Team can finally get a foothold in the match. Oh wow, Briscoe puts an armbar on across the ropes. It's been about 10 matches since he's even done a move at this point, so I'll be impressed with even a DDT at this point. Storm gives Briscoe a backcracker. Briscoe is still on Dream Street when Storm kicks him again. It looks like the match is over when Gunstorm hit Garrett with the catapult into the DDT. They look for the final blow, which Briscoe breaks up. Then the Aces and Eights almost win due to a Briscoe punch into a Garrett roll-up. The ref is now distracted and Bischoff smacks Gunner in the back of the head. And that's the three. Team Scrub have just pinned the tag team champions. Jesus God, don't say they're going to go for a tag title reign next. They've tagged about 10 times together and they haven't done a single double team move. Well, they can't even do moves on their own, so I shouldn't expect elaborate double team moves. It's an S, obviously. Match 20, final match, six man tag. If a member of the Aces and Eights is pinned, they'll be fired. Garrett Bischoff, Nux, and Pisco. They all bounce up and down in the ring of happiness for some reason. What an exciting faction we have here. They face Magnus, Joe, and Steve Borden. This match is different because Magnus beats up all three of the goons on his own. He does the suplex slam to Pisco and then he almost beats Garrett of a rock bottom. Wes breaks up the pin. Magnus is stopped when Team Ego attack him. We cut back to the ring where Doc is struggling to pull Sting into the ring. The Aces and Eights all beat him up together. Pisco gets a two count from a clothesline. I can't wait for this to be over so I never have to look at his piss covered face again. How is Briscoe bold and still has long hair at the same time? What does he think he's Shawn Michaels or something? Joe gets the tag and he hits the atomic drop, the kick and the back senton combination. Pisco's still somehow alive after that, but he can't fight back as Joe hits the snap slam. The Mafia are in firm control. Joe puts the rear naked choke on Wes Briscoe and he's forced to tap out. Never have I ever been so happy. Briscoe lies on the mat in a pool of piss. He knows he's blown it. Garrett can't believe his best friend is about to be fired. It's an S by the way. Bully Ray stomps out to the ring. Briscoe is a shade of orange and red. He's almost Ric Flair coloured. Bully Ray calls Wes a disgrace and tells him to hand over his Aces and Eights jacket. He starts to cry as Garrett and Nux look on. He won't give Bully the jacket back. The crowd are finally cheering and it's his last ever TNA appearance. You couldn't make it up, could you? Bully tells the others to take Briscoe's jacket away. They don't want to do it now, so Bully clotheslines Wes down. Now Bully hits a pile driver on Pisco. If he wasn't pissing his knickers already, he certainly is now. They start playing the Aces and Eights music, but Bully isn't done and he screams, turn it off. He still wants the jacket back. Nux is getting sick of being yelled at, but he does eventually give Bully the jacket. They had a good potential face turn here, but they just didn't pull the trigger for some reason. The next episode of TNA, Hogan left. Three episodes later, AJ Styles left. Well, except one extra appearance a couple of months later. And just a couple of episodes more, Mr. Anderson would end the Aces and Eights for good. So it's nice to see that the end of Wes Briscoe and TNA coincides with the end of TNA. That's not down to him though, is it? So yeah, that's us pretty much done on the Shove It show.
Molly two pence. But you know what? Chubby show. What? 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 When Briscoe. When Briscoe. When Briscoe. When Briscoe. When Briscoe. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I thought this was a joke. I thought this was a nightmare that I'd been having and it wasn't real. Match 21. Nine years later, the team of Vincent and Kenny King accompanied by Eddie Slapnut Edwards. What a weird collection of people we have here, by the way. And they'll face the Aces and Eights, Pisco and Garrett accompanied by D'Lo. Pisco is now pretty much bold and he's lost all of his mass. Garrett actually looks fairly normal. D'Lo looks morbidly obese. This return poses a few questions. Both Wes and D'Lo were fired from the Aces and Eights, so why are they back? How did they get their jackets back? Why would they want to be in the Aces and Eights after the way Bully Ray treated them? In the real world, Wes and Garrett have been teaming together carrying on this ridiculous gimmick since it ended in TNA. During the Covid era, the Aces and Eights were meant to come back to TNA with more of the original guys involved. Instead, they got the three cheapest guys. Well, Mike's probably dead now, so we can't count him. So, will nine years see an improvement in the ring? I doubt it, but let's find out. Garrett will start this one. I wonder if the grease cutter will be effective in this environment. The match breaks down in record time. Wes has the tag for the first time. Their double teaming is a bit better, admittedly, and it ends with a Pisco flatliner. Yeah, new move, add that to your collection, and then forget it. Vincent gets the tag. Wes with a hip toss, and then he works with Garrett for a double team suplex. Briscoe and Garrett send their opponents out of the ring and they celebrate of happiness. When Briscoe gets in, he hits some slow motion clotheslines, and there it is, the grease jack. Unfortunately, Slapnuts distracts him, and Vincent hits a bulldog on Wes for the free. Wow, nine years, and that's the best they could come up with. They waited nine years for this. The ROH guys surround D'Lo. He tells them they better recognize, and then he kills all three of them on his own. D'Lo has a strange look in his eye as he tries to hit the lowdown, but he's stopped by some more ROH geeks, and they beat him up. The Aces and Eights are then saved by Chris Saban. Another thing that doesn't make sense, the Aces and Eights and Saban were enemies. So they're using the Aces and Eights as a bit of a TNA reunion type deal, even though the story was that they hated TNA and TNA hated them. Is three moves a record for Wes in one match? It certainly is up there. Whatever it's a D, the masochist part of me was happy to see them again. Can't believe I just said that, but that show is just so lifeless and full of geeks that I'll take anything at this point. So this time that really is it. All the Wes Briscoe matches have been done for season 3 Ring of the Hall. Now in case you've been hitting the head too many times, there haven't been any other contenders on season 3 yet, so Briscoe is last but he's also first. But how does he stack up against past season competitors and what was his final overall grade? Now being completely honest, it wasn't that bad. To begin with, he was definitely better than I remembered at first. But then around match 10 the drop off in quality was immense. I can't believe he beat Kurt Angle twice or three times if you count the handicap match. This was certainly nepotism 2.0. He didn't deserve to be beating Kurt. Despite winning matches, he never looked threatening, he just looked greasy. His range of moves was poor and when did we last see his finisher, the piss in the wind? Was it match 3 or match 4? You can't blame me for forgetting that he even had a finisher. His promos were the definition of dog shit. His voice wasn't intimidating and he sounded like he was on the verge of tears most of the time. And that team with Garrett, Jesus, they've teamed for 10 years or something and they still barely resemble a team. Briscoe's matches were a complete snooze fest with nothing more than punches, kicks and weird facial expressions. So it's a definite S, the first entry into the shove its own for season 3. But how does he stack up against previous seasons? Most of the season 1 shove its own were on drugs and they were still better than Pisco. And Dale Torborg at least had an interesting gimmick and that team of Norman Smiley made me laugh. I feel like the season 2 shove its own was a lot worse. And that is where I have to make a confession. I'd rather watch Pisco than Chris Melendez, EC3 in the WWE, Anarchia and Wade Barrett in the core. At least Pisco was a part of a major storyline and he got off to a decent start. So if we're going to compare him to season 2, I'll shove him right under Orlando Jordan where he belongs. But the real question is, who was worse, Wes or Garrett? That is a tough one to answer, but at least Garrett has the grease cutter and Garrett was better on the mic too. Let me know who you think shoves it harder out of these two. For the first time in a long time, I'm not going to end this video on a threat, because I don't feel I should be threatening your lives on the day you help me reach my goal. So instead I'll take your girl, and you know what rhymes with goal, and I ain't talking pole.